Hey, how you doing? It's Clayton here from HowToDrawComics.net and welcome to today's tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be showing you my process for creating dialogue balloons for the dialogue for your comic book characters. And as you can see here, we're working in Photoshop. I've got an illustration open that I thought would be a fun kind of example to work with here. She is a character I actually drew up sometime, probably late last year. She's got a little bit of attitude. She's kind of a punk and I thought that it'd be great just to kind of show her personality a little bit more through the dialogue that she was speaking. So I'll show you that pre-made dialogue in just a moment. But for now, let's just jump straight into it. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to lay in the dialogue that she's going to be speaking itself rather than creating the dialogue balloon. And I just find that that's a better approach because it allows me to see how much room the dialogue is actually going to be taking up on the page and thus how big those word balloons really do need to be and roughly how I'm going to need to fit the dialogue balloons around the text. So I'm going to go ahead here and I'm going to click this tool here in Photoshop now you can also hit the shortcut key as well on your keyboard, so it's T, and this is pretty much the exact same text tool that you're going to find in any application that is capable of word processing. So let's go ahead here. I'm just going to click onto my canvas and drag out a dialog box like so, and I'm going to paste in my pre prepared dialogue for this character like so. Now the font I'm using for this text is actually from a website called Blambot. It is the Blambot classic text and I think it costs around about 25 bucks or so but it is so worth it. It's such an awesome font. It looks exactly like it should look within a comic book and uh, it's just really high quality. So if you're wondering where I got that from, again I'm pretty sure the website is blambot.com. Check it out. Have some fun with it. they got a bunch of different fonts on there that you can experiment around with. I think I've also got the uh, the spinner rack font as well. It's also a really, really great font to use for your comic book dialogue. So now that we've got that placed in there, you can see that uh, I've tried to incorporate a little bit of attitude into the dialogue that she's speaking. So, um, you know, that's something that I'd like to try and do as much as possible, just to exude a little bit of the character, a little bit of their personality, a little bit of their attitude through the actual words that they're speaking. I think that it can create a large amount of congruency and believability surrounding the character when the reader is, is taking in the story. So, Again, something that you might want to consider, I think of it as a kind of method acting for comic book illustration in a sense, but uh, as you can see, we've got the dialogue placed in there into the dialogue box. What is the next step? Well, since this dialogue is going to be fit into the circular frame of the word balloon itself, what we're going to want to do is compose the text here into somewhat of a circular shape, meaning that the main body of the text, the belly of the text, should be the widest, while at the tops and the bottom, it should kind of narrow down. So what I'm going to go through now is just the process of actually hitting the enter button at various points throughout the text, trying to make this as circular as possible. So I'm going to go ahead here, place the cursor where I want to hit the enter button in order to bring the text down onto the next line. So I'm going to hit enter there. I'm going to hit enter here, I think, and we'll keep on hitting the enter button until we've made it all the way down to the bottom like so. And it's really just a matter of kind of organizing the text in a way which is going to, you know, make it look somewhat circular, make it look aesthetically pleasing to our eyes. So again, let's see here. We've got the text place there. So I think we can probably hit the enter button around about here. Again, really trying to keep in mind that we want the belly of that text as fat as possible in comparison to the tops and the bottom of it, but we still want to keep it somewhat even. We don't want it to be hugely dramatic in terms of the narrowness and the wideness of the dialogue throughout. So I'm just going to keep on kind of looking up here. I think it could be a little wider at this point. So we'll hit enter around here, bring the down to the next line, and we'll do the same thing here on the second line. We'll bring that up a little bit, hit 
answer on I'm. I think that'll be a good place to, to put it in there. And that's looking pretty good, I think. So once we've got that placed in there, you know what? We might even bring otherwise down a little bit there. Again, sometimes you're just going to have to go back through and kind of resize things until you get to the point that you're happy with it. And I'm just hitting the enter button here and there just to see what I can kind of, again, come up with. And it's starting, it's starting to even out just a little bit too much, I feel. So, um, you know, that's going to happen sometimes. I guess you just got to keep on, keep on beefing it up in the areas where it needs to be beefed up and narrowing it down in the areas that it needs to be narrowed down within. But we're getting there. But I think that's looking pretty good. So let's jump on to the next step. So we've got the text for our dialogue placed in and we've got it somewhat shaped correctly. Now, the thing that I will point out here is that if you've got hyphenation turned on with your text inside Photoshop, and you'll know if that's the case, if you go over here to this little button in the paragraph panel and you've got the hyphenate button switched on, what that's going to do is it's going to split your words up in order to get it to fit into the dialog box, something that you do not necessarily want because it's going to split up that wording and make it look a little bit visually disorientating to your readers. So always make sure that that's ticked off rather than on. So now we have to place in the actual word balloon itself. Now the important thing here is that the word balloon is actually placed on a layer below the text. Otherwise, once we fill that word balloon in with white or really whatever color we're going to use to fill it in with, that text will be obscured if the word balloon is on a layer above it. So we wanna make sure that we've got a new layer created here for our word balloon. And next up, what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump over here to the left-hand side of my screen to the Ellipse tool. Now, you can hit a U on your keyboard with that one as well if you're a fan of shortcuts. And hey, let's face it, they always help us to work fast. And I'm going to make sure that I go up to the top here and I'm just going to tweak the settings for my Ellipse tool here from the get-go because I pretty much know what settings I want. Now, again, for the fill, you can see that we've got a red line through the fill box right now, then that's basically indicating to us that there is no fill applied, meaning that the underlying illustration below the word balloon is actually going to be coming through, right? So we wanna make sure that we fill it, and I'm just gonna fill mine in this example with white, and I'm going to make the stroke thickness one rather than six. So that's the other important thing. Now stroke is pretty much the black outline or border around your word balloon. So depending on what resolution you're working at, again, you know, the font size, the thickness of the outline of your word balloon, that's always going to be dependent on the actual resolution that you're working in. So keep that in mind and take it down depending on what you think looks good and uh, of course, make sure that it's going to be readable as well to your readers when you print it out. So what I'm going to do next, now that I've got the settings for my ellipse tool tweaked, is I'm going to click in the center of my dialog box and I'm going to begin dragging out that ellipse, but then I'm going to hold down Shift Alt on my keyboard. And that's going to allow me to drag it out uniformly like so, coming out from the center of my text. Now I do want to leave a little bit of a border around my text like so, a little bit of a margin there. Once I'm happy with the, the overall size of it, I'm just going to go ahead and let go of my mouse button. That's going to draw the word balloon in around my text like so. And next what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go ahead and I'm going to zoom in a little bit here just so that we can get a better look at what's going on. Now you'll notice that if I go ahead here and I take my illustration and I try moving it around behind my text, that the word balloon, because it's filled now, is actually not going to have any of the dialogue obscured by the illustration behind it because it's filled in there. It's overlapping on top of the illustration. So the important thing to keep in mind is that your dialogue balloon is always sitting above the illustration within the panel. And you'll always want to make sure that the dialogue itself is sitting above the word balloon because if we place the dialogue in the word balloon underneath the word balloon itself what's going to happen is of course our text is going to disappear 
because now the word balloon is actually sitting on top of it. So we just want to make sure that it's at the top of our layers list in the hierarchy, like so. And what you'll notice is that, you know, the, the word balloon isn't quite fitting our text very well. So what I'm going to go ahead and do next is I'm going to show you my process for actually tweaking, transforming, and modifying this word balloon so that it's going to fit around the dialogue that we've typed up here. So the next step is to click on the transform tool up here in the, uh, in the left hand side toolbar. And then once we've got that selected, I'm going to hold down control on my keyboard and I'm going to click once on my ellipse tool. And what you'll notice is that now we've got these handles that have popped up. Um, so if you don't get those handles automatically, just try clicking a second time on your ellipse tool, holding down control again on your keyboard. And that's going to allow you to basically begin modifying the shape that we're dealing with by dragging these anchor points down to wherever they need to be in order to get them fitting the text correctly. So let's go ahead here and start with the top. Now the top, there's way too much space around the top and the bottom of the word balloon in comparison to the actual dialogue. So I'm going to go ahead here and I'm just going to drag that down like so as you can see I'm going to do the same thing here with the bottom I'm going to drag it all the way up so that it's fitting nice and snug around the dialogue within the word balloon. And, and that's pretty much it. We don't have to do a whole lot of modifying from this point onward. Why? Because we took that time in the beginning to ensure that the dialogue we had typed out for our character was actually already shaped roughly into how we wanted it to fit into the dialogue balloon. And so again, we had kind of hit the enter button, the backspace button and we'd compose that text into somewhat of an oval formation already. So then what we had to do is drag the top and bottoms of that dialogue balloon up against the dialogue to make it fit and that's pretty much all that there is to it. Next up, what we're going to do is we're going to create the tail for the dialogue balloon. And we all know what the tail is. That's pretty much the little kind of tail that comes off the dialogue balloon and down toward the mouth of the character so that we know who's speaking. So what I'm going to do next is I'm just going to go ahead here and I'm going to select both my dialogue balloon and the dialogue. And I'm just going to drag it up like so, just so that we can get a good look at the tail of the dialogue. And then what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go to my pen tool right over here. Now, the shortcut key for that is P on your keyboard if you want a shortcut to it. Helps us work faster, so why not? And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that I've got my ellipse layer selected. Now, let's just change the name of that to word balloon, like so just so that we know what this layer actually consists of. And next what I'm going to do, again, making sure that I am on the word balloon layer, I'm going to go ahead here with my pen tool and I'm going to click once inside the word balloon, click down to where I want the tail of the word balloon to end, and then back up into the word balloon. And what you'll notice is that the tail of the word balloon actually kind of connects up with itself inside, again, the word balloon. But here's the problem. You can see that the actual word balloon tail has gone up inside the word balloon and we got this kind of, you know, we've, we've obviously got the offcuts of the pen tool inside it. So what do we do with that? Do we erase it? Well, there's actually an easier way to deal with it, but first let's go ahead here and actually shape the tail of the word balloon so that it's got a bit more of a curved look to it rather than just a, a straight up and down look. So what we, we're going to do in order to tweak the shape of the word balloon tail is we're going to, again, make sure at all times that we're on our pen tool here and we're going to go ahead and we're just going to click once inside the path of the word balloon tail. And then we're just going to drag it out. I'm going to, I've clicked clicked in the middle of my word balloon tail, by the way, to kind of get this curved effect. And then what I'm going to do once I've got that anchor point placed in is I'm just going to hold down control on my keyboard and drag that anchor point into position. And as I drag it, what will happen is that slowly becomes more and more curved. And you do want that curved look just again, because it's going to give us a little bit more of a nicer kind of word balloon type effect. And once we've got that done, what we can do next is we can just kind of, you know, re replace wherever we want this, uh, this tail to be within the word balloon as well. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that, just tweaking it just a little bit. You can see that it's actually quite malleable at this point. 
And once I've done that, what I'm going to do next in order to kind of merge these two elements together, essentially the word balloon and the tail of the word balloon is I'm going to go up here. And again, you have to have your pen tool selected in order to be able to access this neat little tool. You have to go up here to the top kind of settings area for the pen tool. And you need to click this nifty little button up the top here and go down to combine shapes. Again, you want to click this button here, making sure that you've got your word balloon layer selected where we placed the actual tail of the word balloon with the pen tool and you want to go up here to the path operations button you can just right hover right over the top of it if you're ever in doubt you click that and you hit combine shapes and then what's going to happen is those two shapes are going to combine together seamlessly now the really cool thing about this is you can actually go back here so if we hold down control and we click on our word balloon what you'll notice is we can click on the tail we can tweak that as much as we want and we can still tweak the actual shape of the word balloon if we want to do that as well and the entire time that word balloon tail is going to stay exactly where we put it and it's going to stay connected to the word balloon most importantly so that's pretty much the general gist of it you know, this is really great because it's just so modifiable. Like you can mess around with this as much as you like. You can tweak it until you've got the exact right kind of shape that you want. The other thing that I will say is that you can always go back to this word balloon button here. You can go down to your ellipse tool and you can actually continue to mess around with the actual outline for it and as you'll see because we actually merge these shapes together now the outline for both the tail of the word balloon and the body of the word balloon are actually going to have their stroke and their outline adjusted at the same time so you can actually mess around with this again depending on what resolution you're working at I'm going to keep mine to one because that's kind of appropriate for what I'm working with right here but uh, the other thing that you can do of course is you can also so kind of embolden certain parts of your dialogue to create a little bit of visual contrast. Like for example, I might make the uh, the listen honey part of my <laughs> dialogue a little bit bolder, like so. And I might also kind of, you know, embolden this part here. You can mess around with it, really. Again, it's, it's just there to kind of make a little bit of visual contrast. And sometimes if you make it bolder, you will ruin the composition of your dialogue a little bit. So just be careful of that. Um, you might also just want to pay attention to the overall kind of border, the spacing between the text and the word balloon itself, just to make sure that that's all nice and even and it looks good, it looks correct. So... Again, that's pretty much all there is to it. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. Let's kind of zoom out here, see how it looks. And uh, yeah, that's about it. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you got a ton of value out of it and that now you're able to create word balloons for the dialogue of your comic book characters. If you like this tutorial, be sure to hit the subscribe buttons and subscribe to this channel for more comic art tutorials, tips and tricks. And why not head on over to howtodrawcomics.net and sign up to our email list where I'll keep you up to date on new products, new tutorials. You can also check out the howtodrawcomics.net community where you'll find a group of like-minded artists just like me and you who are all actively working to level up their comic art skill set and take their drawing abilities to the next level. So check that out as well. Sign up. It's totally free, of course. Other than that, thanks for watching. I'll catch you later.